See what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's so much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Hi, welcome to On the Waterfront. I'm your host, Mariah Riggs. And this month, I'm really excited to have as my guest, my friend and amazing musician, songwriter, Steve Hartman. Welcome to the show, Steve. What's up? Hey, nice to have you. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> um, so uh, really quickly, uh, Steve, thank you for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for um, having me. We are going to enjoy some of Steve's music uh, later on in the show. Um, but before uh, we get to hear you perform, um, we get to find out who Steve is, what he's done, and how we were lucky enough to have you come to Vermont. Oh, thanks. We're so happy you're here. So, uh, Steve, really quickly, um, you're not from Vermont. No. You're from, where are you from? I uh, grew up in, just outside Philadelphia. Philadelphia boy. Yeah. Born and raised? No. No, I'm, I, <laughs> yeah. was, I was born uh, in Dalat, Vietnam, during the Vietnam War, and uh, uh, brought over during Operation Babylift and uh, adopted uh, when I was about five months old and raised outside Philadelphia. Wow, that's wonderful. Now, what did you think of Philly? I love it. The food, the culture, the people. Um, it's awesome. I love Philadelphia. Yeah, well, it was hard to leave. <laughs> My mom's from Pennsylvania, so yeah. I, I, I fully appreciate it. On the other side, though? Uh, no, Allentown. Oh, nice. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. Lehigh Valley. Perfect. We Israel. don't talk about the other side of Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. So, um, so growing up in Philly, how do you, uh, did you, did you like music early on? How did you get involved in music? Oh, uh, my very first inspiration, and I'm not afraid to admit this or ashamed to admit this, but I, I listened to a song when my mom came to pick me up um, from school. And Richard Marks had just come out with a song called Hold On To The Nights. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Mom, I want to do that. <clears throat> so she's like, what does that mean? And I was like, I want to take piano lessons. And she's like, we already did that, which we did. I was five, and we took piano lessons. Yeah. And you know, I was whatever, when you're five years old. Yeah. But um, I was like, I want to do that. And she's like, well, uh, you pay for them, and I'll take you. So okay. I did for four years. Wow. Took my lessons, and she drove me for four years to this lessons. It was great. That's wonderful. And it's the perfect building block for, oh, for understanding yeah. music as piano. Yeah, if you want to understand the theory of music and how notes relate to each other and you're visual like mm -hmm. I am, everything's in front of you. You can just messing around and, and, and literally messing up uh, is kind of the point. So you can actually see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's also great because you get treble and bass clef, yeah. which is hugely mm -hmm. helpful yeah. you know, moving forward with other instruments and stuff like for that sure. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a great basis. Mm -hmm. So, so you got it. I mean, because you know, I, actually, I don't think I've ever seen you play the piano. <laughs> Not a lot of people know I play. It's kind of like, I guess, one of my own little secret, secret, little uh, secret things. Um, we're gonna have to do a cabaret show with you sometime. I bring it on. I mean, I just, I just do. You know, I only play. I used to play piano at all my shows when I was a kid, starting out when I was eighteen. All my live shows, I'd play two, three hours just on a piano. Okay. And it was, wow. in an, and it, well, on a keyboard, and then eventually I started picking up the guitar, and um, I had played guitar for a while before then, but I didn't do a whole lot of writing on it. <clears throat> and then when I uh, started doing more writing, then I started bringing a guitar and a keyboard, and then eventually I learned that lugging a keyboard around is such a pain. <laughs> so then I started writing more guitar work. I mean, it really, the, the, the gravity away from the piano was really more convenience than it was anything <laughs> else. That's fun. Well, you know, I mean, a grand piano is not like something you stick in your backpack. Or even it's just a full-size keyboard. That, those things are huge and heavy. Yeah. I mean, nowadays the technology has come so far that they are, they are kind of light, but I don't have the still don't have the space in my car. And... That's interesting. You know, because I, I so moving forward, you know, you ended up at Berkeley. I did. Uh, College of Music, and I guess that leads me to my next question because I'm kind of wondering now, how did you audition for Berkeley? Was it guitar or piano? Piano. You did audition with piano. I was a classical trained pianist. Um, wow. Studied all the all the things. Because yeah. that's hard. I mean, the piano is really yeah. that's very. I mean, guitar is too, but is highly competitive. I I hadn't taken piano lessons in eight years when I applied the second time. So I applied when I right out of high school, and I was accepted. Didn't work out. Went to the restaurant school in Philadelphia, and then when I was 24 years old, I was like. I gotta go. Like I, I yeah. it's just something I, I it's just it's calling my name, so I applied again. But I it been it had been by that time eight years since I'd yeah. taken lessons. 
So thankfully, my, my, my old piano teacher wrote a recommendation letter for me. I, I did actually go back to taking a few lessons before I, I went back to Berkeley. And then, um, yeah, I was in way over my head as a piano player because I was going up against, some of them were like 13, 14 years old going to Berkeley. And that's crazy. I'm like, and prodigies. I'm like, yeah. what are you, what? I'm like, not what are you doing here, but what am I You're doing like 12 here? year olds playing Rachmaninoff. Oh just is not a and good And they're like, scene. oh yeah, it's just this, this, this. And they'll sit down and it's almost like they just blinked. And I'm like, uh, what now? <laughs> um, yeah, in retrospect, I should have changed my, my primary instrument. Everyone has to take one, even if you're yep. there for like business law or management, yeah. you have to take an instrument and most yeah. of them take vocals. So yep. it's probably what I should have done. But, a, a bit of a knockoff though, comparatively. It is, but, yeah, yeah, I gotta say, I salute you for piano. That's, that's impressive, hard. man. That's incredible. It was hard, for I sure. Had, I had no idea. Yeah. God, see, I learn everything. I always learn something during these videos. It's always <laughs> awesome. Um, so, you know, getting back sort of, you know, you're Berkeley. What, uh, what were your major uh, musical inf influences? as you started writing music? Oh, um, when I first started writing, uh, musically speaking, I, I guess back then, I started writing when I was 12, 12 or 13. So I guess maybe Phil Collins back then was a really big influence for me. Uh, and then I, I uh, very quickly went into like U2, like Joshua Tree to me is one of the most influential albums mm -hmm. ever written. Um, yep. Peter Gabriel, um, and then into high school, Counting Crows, Dave Matthews, yeah. um, Sean Colvin, Sarah McLaughlin, Annie Lennox. Yeah. Like all the awesome 80s and 90s people that are still doing it today and should be. Damn yep. it. Because <laughs> they're awesome. Because, uh, you know, because there is a certain sound that you have and, and that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it does. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. I, 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 I'm thinking of you percolating in, in uh, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and you ended up in Vermont. I did. And so there's always a story there. I mean, where does every weird, interesting story start? Yeah, you know. Uh, with a woman. With a relationship. <laughs> I mean, you and half my friends who live in Vermont, yeah. I, it's, it's a real thing. <clears throat> I had a five-piece band in, in Boston, and we were, we, our first show in Burlington was at what was then Breakwaters. Oh, wow. Um, and they were four hour shows. So we would come up from Boston and we would, we, you know, we'd either crash at her parents' house and, and, or get a hotel or whatever. It's mostly her parents' house. And, uh, we were here probably every month. Wow. And she was living up here. My, she, uh, my girlfriend at the time also did booking for us. So wow. how convenient that she would always book shows for us up here. So eventually <laughs> it just made sense. The yep. commute was killing me. So, um, I just ended up moving up here. I'm glad you haven't left. No, I am, I'm glad I haven't left either, but like a really, and I can't believe I haven't written a song about this, but like a crappy country, typical country song, the band broke up, she and I broke up, and I ended up staying and moving out into doing other, other things. I really should write a song about that. But you should, it, but you are kind of a mainstay of the, uh, of the Vermont music scene. Oh, I mean, thanks. Yeah, you are. Uh, I don't know, full disclosure, I got to meet Steve because you were the host of uh, Rocket Shop Live, was. which was a crazy live show we used to put on back yeah. in the early ten teens. Teens, yeah. Your early teens, you were our host. I was. Uh, Dave, uh, Jim Lockridge and I, yeah. with Big Heavy World, did mm -hmm. this live music show. Yeah. And you were our host. I was. For years. I don't even know how that happened because Jim's like, hey, Steve, you want to host this thing for me? Uh, sure, what do I get him? He's just, you know, uh, research the local music scene and ask some questions of some people. Uh, okay, well, what about topics? He's like, yeah, whatever you want. And then you got to do the panels. Somehow yeah. you ended up... I have no idea. Jim's good that way. You <laughs> just delegated. find out where you are one day and you're like, I have no idea how I got here, Jim, but thanks. <laughs> and we all appreciate the fact that we were delegating oh, yeah. the uh, panels we did before every show to mm -hmm. you. And, and you did a fabulous job. That oh, was great. Thanks. It was really fun. I mean, it was a really great experience for me to get to know some other players in, in, in the industry around here and everything from studios uh, we talked about uh, music law. We talked about, you know, where the internet's going with music. Mm -hmm. And back then, I mean, it wasn't nearly as big as it is now. Oh, can you imagine? And it was big then. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, session musicians, like how can you do that virtually even mm -hmm. back then? It was a, it was a pretty cool thing. Uh, booking. Oh, uh, we, we had a panel of uh, uh, columnists. Uh, yeah. There was somebody from... Like seven days to free press. We had a, it was a pretty yeah. cool thing. It, it was fun, right? Yeah. Talking about the music industry, yeah. which was great, it was fun. right? Yeah. And so I kind of have to ask you, you know, um, 
you know, you've been you've been in the music industry a lot up here, and how have you seen it change since oh, you first came up here? Dramatically, um, I had, I think I think the internet has a lot to do with that for sure. Um, when I moved here, I think it was two thousand and two. Uh, I think, good lord, uh, and uh, I mean, I knew exactly. It was very easy to figure out where to go, where the quote unquote scene was, and mm-hmm. you know where the open mics were, and it was wasn't as hard to find out who the who the you know the influencers were um, because we were out. Yeah, we weren't hiding in our homes, and you know, or, or you know, and I blame that a little bit on the pandemic, but I mean, yeah, you, you know. People were out and about. It's much, much different than than it is now, and it was super easy to, to figure that out. And you know, I made great friends and uh, met a lot of people um, through the advanced music uh, singer songwriter search. Yeah. That was the, my first little staple. I, I went to a bunch of open mics and applied for that. I was the last one to apply that year. And really? I, and I won it. I oh was my gosh, late. it's amazing. I was late. I was like, uh, yes, here, there's a competition. So, so also, in case people aren't familiar, I- explain what the singer-songwriter series was at Advanced Music. <clears throat> well, so bef- uh, back when Advanced Music was Advanced Music, um, there was Kevin Boyer, also a staple musician in this area, um, fantastic guitarist, held a- an acoustic uh, singer-songwriter guitar search. And um, uh, you, I think it was like, 25 bucks to apply Mm -hmm. and there there's like stages and they were held at different locations in different venues and there was a panel of like three or four judges and you come with your original music you sing for them and if you get past that night you go to the next stage and then um the winner won some recording time and a guitar that's kind of cool and and a and a live slot on the point when the live and local was uh, was a real thing was at the point yeah because yeah. that's, I mean, that's that's like, you know, Vermont's own American Idol, kind of almost. Kind of. It's kind of wild. I mean. It was pretty cool. And I was late. Though. I'm like, oh, all the things or whatever. And I was at all the all the submissions were done yesterday or whatever. And I went in advance and I, I asked if there was if there was any chance I could Little come in. A little of that Steve Hartman charm. I was like, hey, is there any chance I can come <laughs> in? And Kevin was there. He happened to be there. I had no idea who he was at yeah. the time. And he's like, yeah, just come on over. It's at the monkey house. Bring 25 bucks and we'll get you. Oh, my gosh. It's great. It was awesome. And the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> the finals were at Nectar's. That was when Nectar's had the stage along the, along the wall. Mm-hmm. Oh, so much fun, good times. Uh, back in the day, and Steve has pretty much played every venue in Burlington. Oh, point. geez. I've, I if mean, I you, haven't, I've played most of them. You played most of them. I mean, from main stage Flynn to like every small monkey house, all yeah. Flynn all space, those. the main stage. stage yeah. Uh, the black box, Nectar's, Metronome, Higher Ground. The main stage and the lobby. I haven't played Arts Riot, although I've, I've, I've wanted to. Oh, they don't exist anymore. Yeah, I know. And that, I will, I will thanks, thanks for just letting me sit in that and knowing that I'll have to sit with that forever. It's, 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 it's okay. <laughs> we'll survive. I'm still getting over it. Well, maybe you never know. Maybe somebody out there wants to restart. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, what would you say to somebody now starting out in the music scene in, uh, in Burlington? Oh, goodness. In Vermont. Um, that's a really good question because I'm a very big, I'm a very big firm believer in open mics. I think, I think it's a great place that gives people an opportunity to build their community. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because I, I mean, unless you're doing this strictly for, for other purposes, that's what I think music is for. It's, mm-hmm. You know, you build community, you um, build respect amongst your peers, and and you, you grow together both as a community and and as a musician. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, and they're super easy to find. I mean, you can just go to any seven days or whatever, and or look online at any open mics in, in the Burlington area. Are um, there still a few happening? Oh yeah, good. There's, there's still quite around. There's quite a bit around. Uh, Kyle Stevens is a good friend of mine. He he hosts a handful of them every week. So, wow, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, he's doing. He, okay, he does great work. I mean, unfortunately, because of how the music accessibility uh, has been changing due to the internet, and obviously since the pandemic, I mean, it's affected us great, live musicians mm-hmm. greatly. And I would love to see him get some more support to get out there and and, uh, and go go play some more live local music. And so, where? How would somebody, if they were watching this, uh, find those live music events? Live, live uh, believe it or not, I think there's uh, there's an open mic network page on Facebook. Okay. And all the open mics are there. Okay. Did you do. guys hear that? Go on Facebook, open mic 
Facebook page for Burlington, Vermont. Yeah. Take a look at it if I you're I think interested. it's Vermont Open Mic Network, I think. There is you what go. Vermont the Open Mic Network. You yes. heard it here. Yeah. Go check it out <laughs> and become a local musician because uh, we can never have too many. And uh, it's it, yeah. it just makes us all happier and more vibrant and yeah. uh, feeds the community. Feeds the community. It's a great thing. So um, you d you have you do have a studio album. You have an album. I do. And so I thought we'd get into uh, how did the first album happen? I was tired of waiting to be able to afford it. I don't know how ever, how any other musician does it because it's expensive to make an album. Yeah. And we as musicians, contrary to what, you know, I don't know what everyone else thinks about how, how we as musicians make money, but, you know, back in the day, you toured. Yeah. You toured, you make money, and, and you tried to save as much as you can. And nowadays, you can just make, you could literally never leave your house, put mm -hmm. some, you know, not some Spotify, because they don't, maybe I shouldn't say that. Anyway. Royalties is something I've never had, <laughs> never gotten, ever. Um, it's crowdfunding and, and things like that. So I was literally tired, and I, I don't really like to ask for crowdfunding money, but I was like, well, everyone's doing it. It doesn't really seem like it's something, you know, that's bad, you know, mm -hmm. it's, and, uh, or that I should be ashamed of to, to ask for a little bit of help mm -hmm. in that in that area. So I did a little crowdfunding. I was like, oh, my gosh, uh, people might want me to put out an album. So I did, and I, I did. You know, it was 100% crowdfunded, and um, that's how that came about. And it's my first solo studio album I ever put out, and uh, I'm super proud of it. And so, if you want to check out that um, album, or you want to get any Steve Hartman merchandise, yeah, or uh, just become a general fan person, um, <laughs> fan person, <laughs> fan person, <laughs> uh, make sure you go to www.stevehartmanmusic.com where you can find. Um, access to all of those wonderful things. Yeah, Hartman spelled with two N's. Yes, H-A-R-T-M-A-N-N. -N. Yes, I don't know if, if you put one in, I've never actually done that. I don't know where it takes you. Have you tried that? Have you tried that, babe? No. No? Okay. Um, so, you know, uh, that kind of leads me into, I really wanted to talk about an upcoming um, three-part album series that you're working on mm -hmm. currently. And I thought it'd be great for you <clears throat> to uh, tell our audience about that. Sure. Um, it's been... 12 years since I put out an album for the same reason as I, it took me 12 years to release the last one. Um, mostly it's financial, but like uh, like I said, I'm just tired of waiting uh, to, to be able to uh, self-fund it. So I'm, I'm taking donations to try and put together something I'm pretty passionate about. It's going to be a three-part album series. The first two albums are going to be, um, they're going to be, studio albums, four songs a piece. The last album is going to be uh, hopefully one live recorded show of live versions of all the first two albums plus four bonus live tracks that are only going to be recorded live. So, um, Got to check that out. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to hear it, Steve. And it's all going to be hopefully recorded in So Vermont. we're going to quickly hear uh, from Steve really quickly. You're going to play a couple songs for us, oh, cool. which is super exciting. Excellent. I am. Um, so we're going to listen to those right now. Sort of together, 
But you're falling apart When all you wanna do is let go But you hold on so hard Cause day in and day out you cry No matter how much it hurts sometimes Well you smile and you say it's okay When you ask if you are loved You are Cause day in and day out you're crying No matter how much it hurts sometimes Will you smile and you say it's okay When you ask if you are loved when you ask if you are love, when you ask if you are love, you are, you are, Cigarette and fumble for my pen and dare to pretend. I know how to tell you all you've done for me. Take a sip of my tea as you wait for me to finish the next masterpiece. Well, this is. Just my way of saying So humbly So desperately I love you For the home that you open The kind words you've spoken And the miles you've broken Never let me give up Even when I've had too much You still Sleepy. So desperately to love you, you're my family. Because you believe, even when I can see, there's no good reason. Step up to remind me of why you gave me wings To never stop chasing and always keep reaching But don't forget to breathe 
so desperately. I love you for the home that you opened, the kind words you've spoken, and the miles you've broken. Never let me give up, even when I've had too much. You still come see me play so desperately. I love you. You're my family. spoken and the miles you've broken never let me give up even when i've had too much you still come see me play so desperately i love you you're my family So Steve, uh, yeah. that was great. It was so wonderful to hear you play. Thank you so much for performing on for us today. Um, thank You're you welcome. guys so much for uh, being here. I also wanted to mention really quickly that Steve and I are putting together a Lakeshore Community event series. Uh, the uh, link is there below. Uh, we're looking for donations. Uh, for more information about it, it's going to be uh, dinner and music uh, in the Main Street Landing Black Box. So please check that out. Check out Steve's awesome new album. It's going to be incredible. I'm sure on his website he'll let you know when that's coming out. You can check those out. Sure. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, being with us this, uh, this month. And I'll see you back on the waterfront next month. Take care. Bye. <laughs>